So now we're going to actually start testing with the power probe and show you the differences. For those of you who are not familiar with the power probe, it is not a test light, although it looks like one. It is more than a test light. It has two alligator clips to connect to the battery and has a very long wire so that you can hook up to the battery and then run just about anywhere on the vehicle. But to hook it up, we're going to connect the red to the battery and the negative to the battery. Now the power probe lights up and we'll be ready to test with it. Now I have my multimeter on the battery as well. You can see that the battery directly on the multimeter is reading 12.5. Now the power probe, if you have the generation 3, power probe 3, it actually can read voltage, it's got a multimeter in it. It's actually got the rocker arm. Now the rocker arm actually sends to the tip up here power or voltage, whichever you are going to send. If you go forward, it's going to send power up here. If you go downward, it's going to send ground up here. And it also has got the red and the green light and the beeper. All of those things are useful. If we take the power probe and touch it to the power post on the battery, we can see we're reading 12.5 volts which is the same as a multimeter. The red light is on and the beeper is sounding and it's a nice bright sharp tone. If you want you can turn the beeper off but it's kinda handy having that beeper so we're gonna leave it on. Now we're gonna go to the ground side. When we touch the ground side it's gonna read zero volts. The green light shows up and the different sound for the ground side. Now, if you're reading zero volts, you have a green light, and you have a clear sound, that means you have a good ground. Same thing on the power. You have a good sound, a red light, and you're reading 12 volts, you have a good power. Now, if you take the power probe off and you check your circuit, 12.5 red and a good sound. 12.5 red and a good sound. That means I'm on the power side of the circuit. It is an indicator. It's a logic probe to tell you which side of the circuit you're on. If we go to the ground side and touch over here, it's green, zero volts, and a nice clear sound. The same thing on the switch, the connection. So we're on the ground side of the circuit. Now there's a clear difference between the power probe and a DVOM. If you're going to do electrical diagnostics, you definitely need a good DVOM. A power probe is a great tool, but you need a DVOM. It can do things that the power probe cannot do. Honestly, the power probe is my first tool of choice. I usually go to that first because it is so quick and simple and does most things, but there are some limitations to it that you will need to use a DVOM for. Now, in testing this, can you do a voltage drop test with the power probe? Sure. We'll show you how. You remember how with the DVOM we used the positive probe and we ran around and we had 12.5, 12.5, and we go over here and we're reading zero volts? The same thing can happen with the power probe. You can put it right here. Now why I like it, because you can not only read the 12 volts, but you can hear the beeper and you get a red light. It tells you that's clearly a good positive connection. Go to the fuse. Same thing, the connection. Now when we go past the resistance, when we go over here, now we've got a good different sound, green light, and we're reading zero volts. So we've dropped all the voltage there. Now the one thing that's nice about the power probe is you don't always have to re really look at the meter. Sometimes you know if you're underneath a hood or something like that, it's kind of hard to get around to see it. But if you hear that strong tone, that means you've got a good ground. And we go through the rest of the circuit, all the way to the battery. We've got a good ground. So this is the ground side of the circuit. This is the power side of the circuit. We're reading 12.6 volts. We're reading 0 volts. We've got a good reading on a voltage drop. So now let's introduce that resistance again and test both. 
I'm going to separate this and bring in our known resistance. Now we've got our resistance hooked up. We're going from ground to the battery. We're going to take the positive from the DVOM and slide it in right here. So with the DVOM, the positive lead over here, we're showing 12.6 volts. Our light is on, but it's dim because of our resistance we've entered in. I'm going to touch the lead right here, we're reading 5 volts. That is too much. By using the DVOM, we know we've got a problem somewhere between here and the next place we find a good ground, which is reading zero. Now, if we use the power probe, we do the same thing. We've got 12 volts over here. We come through our dim light. And over here, we're reading 5.6 volts. Now, one thing I want you to notice here. We do not have a green light, and we do not have a buzzer. That means, but we're reading 5.6 volts. That is clearly telling you that there is a problem somewhere between here. Now if we go to the ground, we come back over here, we're reading zero. We've got a green light, and you've got the buzzer. That means we've got a good ground. So with the power probe, you can find the problem by having your power, Go through your resistor. Now you've got ground, but there's no green light, there's no buzzer, you've got too much voltage, you located your problem. Your problem is somewhere between the good ground and where you have too much voltage, or you're dropping 5.6 volts. That is too much volts. So in understanding voltage drop, when we're reading 5 volts here, we have not dropped 5 volts. We want to drop all the volts from 12 volts to 0. We've got 5 volts remaining. You should be expecting 0 because we're on the ground side. We have 0 over here. With a goal of less than half a volt as acceptable voltage drop, when you have a reading higher than that, that is where your problem is. Now we're going to do a side-by-side -side voltage drop comparison with the multimeter, DVOM, and the power probe. Now I've taken the negative probe of the DVOM and hooked it to the battery. That's the same thing as when you connect the negative side of the power probe to the battery. Now the power probe has ground, just like the negative probe on the multimeter has ground. When I connect the positive side to the battery on the power probe, now the power probe has the positive side. You confirm that by rocking the power forward or backwards. Now I'm going to test with my multimeter probe and the power probe. If I go right to the battery, the power probe says 12.6. The DVOM says 12.6. Now remember, we're testing a circuit voltage drop with the circuit completed. The device is on. I'm going to go to the connector just before it. The DVOM is 12.5. Power probe is 12.5. I'm going to go to the, this side over here on the ground side. We're switching from the power to the ground side. And with the DVOM, I'm reading 0 volts. With the power probe, I'm reading 0 volts. So you can do a voltage drop with the power probe just like you can a DVOM. As technicians these days we have to do a lot of electrical diagnostics. We spend a lot of money on testing equipment, lab scopes, scanners, but understanding the very basics of electronic testing, voltage drop testing, can go a long way. So learn about it, understand it, and add it as one of your skills.